Blessed are you among women. Advent 
Advent is a time of waiting, and it brings with us an invitation to transformation. Transformation that shows itself in a myriad of ways. Ways that are sometimes subtle, at other times bold and undeniable. Transformation can come as an abrupt surprise or in a process that matures over time. Tonight, we invite you to look for the seeds of change that signal transformation. Seeds that appear in the stories and in the music which we're about to hear as Mary struggles with the reality of the impending birth. As Joseph soulfully ponders the role which he is about to take on. As Mary's parents, Anne and Joachim, face their heart-wrenching dilemma. A dilemma faced by parents in every time and in every age. The Advent's journey begins with the angel's appearance to Mary. Listen carefully as the story unfolds.
was so odd that I didn't question, I didn't try to dissuade the angel or ask that someone else be found. I simply responded, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word.
synagogue, say my prayers, read the Torah, pay my tithe, live my beliefs. I'm a good and honest husband. For all the good I did, I was supposed to be rewarded with good luck. I know that's not what the rabbi will say he teaches, but that's what I've heard. No, they will say, Joachim got what he deserved. But who, I ask you, deserves a teenage daughter, pregnant, before she's married? <laughs> plan in 
which Mary was simply a sign. Get married. 
But before they started to live together, it became clear that Mary was going to have a baby. Joseph was a godly man, and he did not want to put Mary to shame in public, and so he decided to divorce her quietly. But as Joseph was thinking about this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And the angel said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, for the baby within her is from the Holy Spirit. She is going to have a son, and you must give him the name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel had told him, and he took Mary home as his wife. This is such a confusing time. I believe what the angel told me in the dream, and yet it's hard to fathom that such a thing could be true. This is not at all what Mary and I or her parents had planned. We are only halfway through the betrothal year. If we have the wedding now, folks will wonder why, but begin to talk. Maybe I should go through with my original plan. I could divorce Mary by quietly giving her the papers instead of presenting them at the village gate, as is most often the case. And then Joachim could send her to live with her cousin Elizabeth for a while. Perhaps then no one would have to know. But I love her so. Her devotion to God I know is complete. Her soul is pure. In her early years, they were spent in the temple growing in grace. Now that she's reached the age of consent, it's time for her to marry, to leave her parents. When Joel came, came to my house and talked to me to arrange the betrothal, my heart was overjoyed. The angel's message foretold the promised one. I am a quiet, simple man, only a carpenter by trade. But I vowed then and there to devote my life to her and to the tiny babe soon to be born. No, I cannot divorce her.
blessed among women, the angel said. But what kind of a blessing is this that has been bestowed on me? To be doubted, to be scorned, to endure the accusing looks of those I love? This cannot be the blessing intended for one who has found favor with God. My mother is willing to try to believe. My father, not so much. In other matters, my father has been the one to trust to recognize God's will in all we say and do. Dear God, restore his faith in me. Help him to see I need him so. Give him the courage to stand by me, the wisdom to help us do what's best. My heart is still. Within me, 
Does your heart beat with mine? How I yearn to hold you in my arms, to feel the touch of your soft skin, to marvel at your tiny feet and hands. If only our families now could know and accept the truth of what I carry inside, what joy we could take in the birth of this baby boy.
I spoke with Joseph's father, and he's agreed. We're being required by Caesar to return to our homeland and be counted like animals. Oh, no. What Caesar wants to know is how many slaves he's captured. He'll use the numbers for bragging rights. But we're people, God's people, not skins of wine to be inventory. Why does God allow some to rule over others? Why does God allow some to own others? Anyway, we're going to send Joseph off in the middle of the night. Mary will leave a week later with her cousin Ruth and her husband. They'll stay in Bethlehem for a couple of years, and then return with a baby. Well, no. <laughs> Everyone will know, but it will give us time, and no one will be able to say it to our face. No matter what, my grandchild will grow up to be an illegitimate. No, but after all this trouble, I'll probably be able to get this all off my mind once the baby arrives. Especially if it's a boy. <laughs> Joel comes plan breaks my heart. In its conception, should I, her mother, have had a part? Obviously not. For by himself, he decided to send our child off just so in him others would not stop. Surely Jobin's heart must have turned to stone. To wed, wait, want our daughter to bear the babe alone? To send her off to Bethlehem to hide? To give birth without me, her mother, by her side? Oh, the plan is cruel, heartless, absolutely insane. How can I tell you the depth of my pain? And now that Joachim has won this round, We'll never know if a better way could have been found. <laughs> Then, dear daughter, meet head on your fate. Go hand in hand with Joseph as your mate. And may he be good to you and protect you from ill. Provide you with shelter from the cold night's chill. I'll wait here with love for your return. I'll try to contain my fear and concern. I bid you Godspeed on your journey, dear daughter. And though he won't say it, so is your father. Searching for my own. This journey. 
journey, this journey in the bleakest dead of winter, has been long and aching. Joseph on foot, me on the donkey's back, bitter with my tears and ripe with Joseph's fears along the way. When at last we reached the village gate, we received no welcome from this Joseph's ancestral town. Only streets crammed with soldiers and beggars. The inn's all full, and every door locked tight against the stranger. It is so hard to believe that God's plan was to bring us this long way, only to find shelter in a drafty cattle stable? An unassisted birth among the straw? How can a broken down manger bear the hope and the light of the world?
calls for something more. The call may come in a dream, as it did for Joseph, or in a letter found in your mailbox. It might come with the offer of a new job or with a new neighbor. We never know when or how it will come. All we know is that there are times when God steps in and does something unexpected in our lives, something that calls for our response. May that response, like Mary and Joseph's, contain the seeds of transformation. As we go now out into this Advent night, we do so to wonder and to wait. Mm -hmm.